In the month of April, we handled 40 fewer calls than we did in the entire of 2019. I can remember not sleeping at all. Like, just as soon as you finish a 12-hour shift, you would get a death call at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm currently a student of mortuary science, and upon licensure, I'll be the fifth-generation funeral director in my family. The most memorable moment during this pandemic was the services for a young child whom we buried. The wails of her mother still reverberate in my heart. Death is such a huge transference of energy. To have someone that was once alive and is now dead, to be able to usher people and to midwife them, so to speak, through that process of grief so that they can transform that energy for the better. Our funeral home was founded in 1899. It started off as a very small funeral home in Orange, New Jersey. It was founded by my great-great-grandfather. And during that time, death was very much so handled along color lines, which to some extent is still happening today. Here, I bought this for you all. For you and the family, you was so, you know, you, your mom, all of y'all was so accommodating. My family and I go nowhere else. Um, for our services. They're very accommodating, they're very loving, um, and they're just like family. There's still a lot of funeral homes in underserved communities that don't have access to basic equipment that they need to protect themselves. This is just illuminating things that were constructs that were already in place in our country. So if you have money for a private grave, um, you most likely can be buried within a week. And if you don't have money, if you're impoverished, you're waiting upwards of six weeks for your loved one to be buried. Yeah. Hey, Granny. You want to stay here or do you want to go out and come back? Because nobody can come in with anybody in here. You're going to have to go out. Sorry, we have to be this way. It's okay. Yeah. Have a seat right now. So, two more trucks. Right now, there's no funerals as we know them. There's only allowed a private visitation of no more than five people in the chapel at a time. So right now we're having to control the flow of who comes in and it's very difficult. Especially in the black communities, like funerals have always been a time of celebration, but I feel that that aspect of celebrating one's life has kind of been taken away from, from their final goodbyes. My aunt Gwendolyn Bolger passed away. She was in a nursing home. She had gotten sick due to the coronavirus. We hadn't been able to see her since February due to the rules and stipulations of the nursing homes and the hospitals. So, And um, we will be cremating her, which normally we probably would uh, have done a burial, but that would take maybe to the end of June. And it's difficult because you want to uh, touch a loved one. You want to kiss them, but be a little bit more reserved because we don't know, and I don't think anyone knows. I see a future where the conversation about death is normalized, that people don't shy away from these topics, that the people that you love and that love you know what you want for your end of life, how you want to be treated. Do you want to be embalmed? Do you want to be cremated? And to have that understanding prior to an illness, prior to a pandemic, and prior to death is of paramount importance.